Our first video in this section was about licensing. In this video, we're going to return to the technical discussion and learn about checkpoints. Long ago, when Microsoft's server virtualization platform was called Virtual Server, it used a technology called checkpoints to grab a virtual machine at a specific point in time so it could be quickly reverted later. When Hyper-V Server replaced Virtual Server, its version of this technology was called Snapshot. This would end up causing confusion due to the Volume Shadow Copy Service activity, also called Snapshot. Also, the Virtual Machine Manager product held on to the old checkpoint terminology. So, to reduce confusion, this technology is once again called Checkpoints as of Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. First, we'll see how to perform a checkpoint. Failover Cluster Manager cannot do this, so your only GUI option is Hyper-V Manager. Just right-click on a virtual machine and click Checkpoint. It will show a status of creating checkpoint. Once completed, down here in the middle section, you can see the results. This is the checkpoint. This is the current status of the virtual machine. Before proceeding, first see that you can right-click on it and rename it. This is very useful and something you'll definitely want to take advantage of. It's a quick way to remind yourself why you created this checkpoint. Let's connect the virtual machine and create a file on its desktop. Now, let's create another checkpoint. With that, let's go look at what's happening on disk. First, check the virtual machine settings and look at the hard disk. See how the VHDX has this odd name? Let's look in Windows Explorer. You'll see that we have these AVHDX files. The A is for automatic. That's how you know it's part of a checkpoint. This is a differencing disk. Any activity in the virtual machine will be written to the current AVHDX file. Any reads will come out of whichever of these files has the most recent data. It's very important to understand that all changes are written into these. If you don't watch them, they will simply grow until they consume all your disk space. If that happens, all VMs on this disk will pause and will stay that way until you free up some space. We also want to jump over to the Snapshots folder. Here, we have the states of the virtual machine and the checkpoints. Let's go back to Hyper-V Manager. Let's say that the service pack didn't work out and we want to go back to how we were before that. Just right click on the original and click Apply. It will ask if you want to take another snapshot first. That's pretty useful as it gives you the opportunity to not completely throw away whatever has happened. Now we're back to the beginning. Notice how the Now item has moved. Using this technique, you can create snapshot trees as necessary. If this snapshot is discarded, everything past this point is lost forever. Let's open the virtual machine. As you can see, the file that we created is not here. It was saved into the avhdx file, and we have reverted back to the original vhdx. Because we have a later snapshot, we could get it back if we wanted to. Now let's get rid of these checkpoints. Just right-click on them and select Delete. Notice that the merge occurred while the VM was online. This copies all the data from the AVHDX into the source file, and then the AVHDX is deleted. You can also use the delete subtree to remove several checkpoints at once. There are PowerShell commandlets to work with checkpoints, and they work very well. Unfortunately, they still use a confusing mix of the terms checkpoint and snapshot. Use the checkpoint VM commandlet to create a checkpoint. It's got a snapshot name parameter that lets you name it at creation time. To get rid of them, use Remove VM Snapshot. A nice feature of this is that you can pass multiple VM names at once without specifying any particular checkpoints if you want to clean them all up at once. You can see all the available PowerShell commandlets for checkpoints like this. 
They're all pretty easy to understand, and of course you can use Get Help for more information. One that we want to call out here is Export BM Snapshot. You can do this on the GUI as well. This allows you to perform an export on a snapshot, which you can then use for any purpose you see fit. It very conveniently folds all the AVHDX files into VHDX files, so this can come in handy if you've got a VM that's locked up all the available space. You still need a target location with enough room for it though. So remember, keep an eye on checkpoints so they don't take up all your space. And remember that they don't replace backup because they rely on a single set of source files. That's all you need to know for checkpoints. In our next video, we'll examine the Hyper-V Best Practices Analyzer.